right, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started this morning. This exciting morning because we have got Sheriff uh, Mark Reynolds here this morning with us. I, I went and looked on his Facebook, and you know, Sheriff, you know this, but he has over a thousand likes on his Facebook. So, I mean, congratulations for that. that is a problem. Even know. Yeah, no, that's really good news. So, uh, he is here today to talk about a radio project, the office remodel, and the new jail which I found this interesting last night. You may have already heard this, Mark, but there was a perfect crime committed at the jail last night. Apparently, the, the toilets were stolen. And the issue with that is the investigators don't have anything to go on. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I, I wasn't sure if I should use that one or not during the coffee break, but I thought I should. This morning in the room, we have uh, Sheriff... Uh, uh, Reynolds with us. We also have uh, Phyllis Forrester, and then we have Jennifer Watson as well as Stephen Brockman. So they are all here helping to guide this thing to keep me on track. So thank you guys for being here this morning. Uh, I'm excited about this because we've only got about 20 minutes to hear from the sheriff and see what's going on in town. And then we're going to open it up for any Q&A. If you do want to chat in a question during the session, feel free to do that. Uh, that's a great way to just communicate with us as we come in. And again, we'll leave some time at the tent at the end to ask a few questions. Uh, but with that, I'd like to turn it over to you, Sheriff, and uh, tell us what's going on in the community. Well, good morning, and thank you for having me. This is something I really enjoy talking about because as everybody goes down 35, it, it's one of the, the new local buildings that you see is the new Comal County Jail that we should all be uh, very proud of. So what many don't know, as we watch the construction, we actually moved the staff in, uh, the command staff, the 17th of last month, and then uh, very quietly and very auspiciously, we moved the inmates in on the 23rd of last month. So with that, uh, I get a count every morning. So this morning's count was 317 inmates inside the facility. I'm very proud to say we have zero outside of the county, so we are no longer paying that fee for outside uh, inmates. But the nicest part about the jail count is we have 265 available beds in our jail, which in Texas, especially along the IH-35 corridor in Central Texas, is a commodity. Uh, you and I, being taxpayers, we pay for every bed in that 582 bed facility whether or not it has an inmate in it or not so now we have people knocking on the door uh, Hayes County our, our neighbors to the north the US Marshal Service in San Antonio uh, are begging for beds so right now we're in the process of working some uh, memorandum of understanding and some interlocal agreements with the marshal service and some other counties to house their overcrowded inmates in our facility, whereby we will recoup those tax dollars that it cost you and I to run that jail. We can recoup that cost by holding out of county prisoners. So uh, that is one of the most uh, amazing things I've been able to say in a long time. Uh, I can tell you that just dollar wise, I don't know what uh, commissioner's court will determine will be the actual cost. We did figure out with the approval of this, uh, our next year 2021 budget times the number of beds that the jail holds times the number of days in the year, we figured out that it costs approximately $79 per day to house an inmate in our facility. But if we could recoup that, that's, you know, we're not making money, but we are uh, recouping uh, that money. Uh, the transition into the new jail went very, very well. I, I was uh, very excited. We expected or hoped to move the inmates over in a 14-hour time span, bringing over 24 an hour. Uh, the staff, I will tell you, came in uh, 7 8 o'clock that morning of the 23rd and moved every inmate and all the property there in, uh, in seven and a half hours. They were finished by 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So. We had some hiccups with some some of the systems, nothing that uh, hampered our holding inmates and anything. And we have worked with the construction people on uh, some of these issues and we are well underway. And we figured that there would be uh, a few things in the new facility, but uh, my goodness, it's clean, it's efficient. It, it, it just has these 
designs that were on purposely designed within uh, to make this basically a showcase jail. And, and there is just all this expansive room uh, that was built for not only the staff, but so that we could grow uh, into it with only having to uh, drop in additional housing pods in the future. So we're very excited about that. Now, on the other side of that, now that everybody's in the, the new jail that needs to be over there and the staff, the sheriff's office is basically uh, a ghost town. It's empty because the sheriff's office located in the, the Walter Feller's Law Enforcement Center uh, used to house the jail and the sheriff's office, but uh, now that the jail has been uh, transplanted into their new digs, uh, we're all alone over there. But we are already in the planning stages with the county to vacate that particular building uh, probably before the end of this year uh, and part of our staff will move into the empty offices that are available in the new jail and some of the staff will move into some temporary portal buildings that are located behind the sheriff's office for that remodel that uh, is scheduled to start in january of 2021 uh, we're looking at approximately one year to basically gut the sheriff's office, remove the old jail, and completely remodel it so that all of that space can become uh, offices. Uh, and it, again, we're, we're looking at maybe uh, December to March of 2022 that that will be uh, completed. But you go back there now where the old jail was located and you look at all the space that's, that, that's gonna make for for offices, uh, new evidence storage, uh, new dispatch center, it, it, it's going to be uh, amazing. So we'll work through the the remodel, and we're again looking uh, forward to that with the with the county. So uh, this morning I was a little bit late getting over here to you. I we had a meeting. We're in the middle of a radio project that's scheduled to end uh, summer of 2021. But we have a, a radio system now that, that's comprised of several antennas located in Comal County, but it's primarily uh, a two channel system, meaning that we only have two radio channels for all the law enforcement agencies, except for the city of New Braunfels have to utilize those two radio channels. Uh, it's something that's uh, quite old. It was here before I got here. I think somebody told me it's been here since 1982, 83, and at any one point in time, you've got the county, the city of Garden Ridge, the city of Bulverde, constables, deputies, fire marshals, uh, fire EMS, all trying to utilize these channels. But the county just got decided about a year and a half ago to go to a trunking system, a six pair trunking system that basically has six antenna arrays uh, around the county that basically form a giant circle. But it would give this new radio system uh, 36 talk around uh, channels to talk on. So basically it's gonna be officer safety, efficient. It's gonna be faster for the responses uh, for citizens in the county that need some type of, of help regardless of the law enforcement or fire EMS. But uh, the safety aspects that are built into it You'll go, you'll sit in your car, or you'll sit on, have your portable radio, you'll key the radio and it'll tell you if it's busy or if it's ready to talk. It'll have talk groups. It's just uh, a much uh, newer, newer system, newer technology, uh, and it, it's going to greatly benefit the county. So we're, we're looking forward to that as well. We uh, also are working the commissioner's court, uh, was presented a deal. We have, when y'all call the sheriff's office, your phone call comes into a, a system called CAD, Computer Aided Dispatch. And our CAD system is worked with, with our communications officers. Uh, they're receiving your information and they're entering it. And that CAD system does not transcribe anything that the dispatcher has worked so hard with you as the caller put into our RMS system, report management system. So when the deputy, when fire EMS, when the constable, when DPS comes to you and is working with you on your call for assistance, 
the deputy or the officer starts all over again from step one, which has got to be uh, a little frustrating to me as a caller because I've already told one person all the information. Now I got to tell the other person. But this new uh, item is called Flex, Spillman, Motorola. It combines these two systems, the computer-aided dispatch with the RMS system, and again, makes it uh, extraordinarily quicker and more efficient and safer for the officers and the citizens. Uh, we just had that meeting this morning and the county will be entering into a contract to have this uh, onboarded in the 21 uh, budget. And again, it goes right along with the new uh, radio project. So these are just things that we've had for a long time. And while they, they work, they weren't the most efficient or, um, you know, they just needed to be upgraded because of how quickly we're growing uh, as a county. We all read the newspaper this morning. It said very clearly on the front page that, you know, the city of New Braunfels is eyeballing 100,000 uh, right in the face. So, uh, and it's like that everywhere in the county. Just all of these blocks of land that we have are just slowly being uh, swallowed up. So, uh, the big thing with everybody still is is COVID and our, our responses to COVID and how each one of us as individuals deal with COVID. Uh, I will tell you not too long ago, this is a kind of a funny story. Uh, I got a phone call from another county elected official. Hey, can you go, let's go grab a bite of lunch together. Sure, so we had lunch. Uh, had a great discussion at lunch at 6 30 the e in the evening that person called me and said i have some bad news for you I said, what's your bad news uh i have covid <laughs> it's just oh, positive it was like did you know that at lunch when you invited me to lunch no I didn't know uh so i i've even had to go through my 14 day uh quarantine thankfully and, and uh most surely no signs or symptoms but I can see the difficulties that it presents on individuals and families. You know, we're we're still cautious when we uh, get calls for service to go assist people out in the county. Uh, you know, we try to wear masks. I know that I get uh, phone calls daily, absolutely daily, about well, your deputy didn't have a mask when they stopped me. Uh, well, number one, slow down, or you know, do the appropriate traffic, and you know, we stop it. We we. You know, we don't have masks on every time, and you can still social distance when you do these things. But uh, there's only a couple things. We've opened up the public lobby at the sheriff's office. We do have the online reporting system that is an option only. So if you want to do a report online, you can. But if you want to, deputy one is still coming, but we're going to uh, practice that social distance. I know that. Um, Jail standards, Texas Commission on Jail Standards that re regulates all Texas jails, still has not opened up uh, visitation for the inmates. So uh, parts of the office are still mandatorily closed by the governor's office and, and, and all of that. But, and um, the last thing that I'd like to tell everybody is thank you uh, for the outpouring of thoughts and prayers to our deputy. Eddie Luna that uh, was shot while trying to uh, effect an arrest for a felony warrant. I will tell you that I, I've uh, visited with Eddie on many occasions personally, individually, and uh, talked to him all the time on the phone, but this guy has the, the biggest heart, the strongest resolve, and the just steadfast determination. Uh, he did lose the lower part of his arm, but he is so looking forward to getting to rehab and a prosthetic because I want you to know that he has every intentions on returning to the sheriff's office. And uh, when he does so, we're going to have a place for him. So, but thank you uh, for all the phone calls, the letters and, and the thoughts. Um, he's doing wonderful. So we're just looking forward to getting to the rehab. So, I don't know. All right, great. And I'm so happy to hear that for Eddie. Uh, so that's fabulous. You, you had mentioned the new jail and everything that's come on board. What kind of increase in employment has that uh, created for you? When, when we had the original concept of the jail, Texas Commission on Jail Standards actually has a, a program that does not cost counties anything where they will come and do a survey based on the operations of the jail. 
uh, County Judge Sherman Krause and I both got a letter that based on the design and the functionality of that jail, we needed a hundred and I want to say 125 corrections officers to run that jail. But I don't want you, anybody to think, well, that's 125 at a time because you have to have four shifts because they work 12 hour shifts and then you have to have an overlap. But at that point in time, we were 59 corrections officers short from that 125 or 115 uh, corrections officers. But commissioner's court last year in our 2019 budget had budgeted for those because at that point in time, the jail was supposed to be, you know, well underway and we were almost supposed to be completed. So for, I guess, the last nine months of the old jail's operation, we had corrections officers basically on top of each other. But uh, now when they're in the new jail, you can, you can see it very clearly that those 59 new corrections officers uh, cost the county uh, $3.3 million, which was the increase in the budget for the 2019 budget. All right, great. Uh, and if anybody's got a question they want to ask, feel free to unmute, or if you want to chat something in, feel free to do that as well. Um, I, you know, I didn't notice as we were coming through the COVID time, never heard anything about our jail having a spread. Uh, and how does that work out? How have you done so well with that? We, I, I will tell you that I, I couldn't be more proud of the staff. So before the state and before jail standards actually implemented some of their COVID plans, we had already decided uh, with the type of infection and the pandemic and the way things were, we were already screening inmates prior to them coming into the jail. So we didn't want to accept anybody. We were doing questionnaires about where they had been, signs and symptoms with the information that we had received. And I will tell you, uh, we're blessed as a county because we're surrounded with hot spots, but we have not had one case of COVID uh, come into our facility. I'm looking for a piece of wood, but uh, not not one. So, and that's the staff, and that's our, nobody, no inmate that we've ever run into or no prisoner ever used what I thought would happen. And that is to say, I have COVID, which you know would probably say, hey, you know, I don't know if I want to do a. Uh, an actual arrest or I'll do an at-large charge with We were very blessed in the county not to have any COVID cases inside the jail. Excellent. All right, any questions from any of the viewers? I, I do want to say one thing, and I know that uh, leadership New Braunfels will be coming uh, over to tour the jail on the 10th, and we did many tours of the facility. And it's something we love to to show those that you know wish to come in there we don't have our run of the place anymore because it has inmates but we do tours on tuesdays and thursdays at two o'clock uh, and we allow people to come into visitation area to try to uh, congregate there and then we have staff members that will walk you around the public areas show you the historic stone and the historic cornerstone from the old 1930 jail uh, but it's there for y'all to see if uh, you wanted to come by and take a tour. That's great. So that's Tuesday, Thursdays, 2 o'clock. Yes, sir. And, and I had a person in the last leadership class that went there and toured it, and he was just amazed at the size of it. And how it just kind of goes on and on. So, I mean, it really is a unique facility that's been built there. Anybody else got a question? Is there, is there something that you are looking for uh, that the community can help you with at this point? Are there any any uh, hot issues that you really need help? You know, just the out, I'm, I go back to Deputy Luna, the outpouring of support for him. But, you know, we are we're blessed as a county to have the, the support for law enforcement and our first responders. You know, it, I can't explain the, the number of waves I get in a patrol car or you walk into a restaurant and just the, the outpouring of support. So I thank y'all for that because if, if I'm getting it, I know that the, the men and women that are out there in uniform uh, are getting it. And um, that's the one thing I can just tell you that we're very blessed in this county to have. But as far as our needs, we're uh, the Commissioner's Court was very good to us this year in our 2021 budget. 
again, some of the items. We didn't need anything uh, for the jail because it was, you know, it's all brand brand new. So, and we're still trying to get uh, somewhat acclimated to it. And then we don't need anything for the sheriff's office because we're going to fix it vacated. So, uh, no, I mean, just thank you for that support. That's the biggest thing I can say. So we have one question pop up. Will the sheriff's office have a role in distribution of the upcoming COVID vaccine? That's a good question, and I will I'll get you an answer from public health. But that's more, I know that we would participate. You know, other pandemics, the county actually participates in drills for uh, what they call the distribution of the strategic national sh supply. So if they treat this COVID vaccine in a similar manner where they'll do these vaccination places, I, I can see where we could do that. If it were one of those things where am I going to mandatorily come and find you and make you take the vaccine, that answer is no. I, I'm your first line the local defender of the United States Constitution and uh, will uphold the Bill of Rights and your rights. But when it comes to you know, doing the distribution centers, should the county do it that way, then yes, we would, uh, we would do that, we would participate. In the, one of your programs is Green Santa, I believe, every year, right? And the, will that occur this year? Yes, we're uh, we're trying to figure out. We don't know if we can if we'll be delivering Green Santa. Uh, we this is a program that helps uh, you know families that may not have the means to do a Christmas for their children, and we allow the kids and the parents to do a wish list. Uh, last year, I think we helped 75 or 80 families. And the kids do these like Santa Claus wish lists, and then we have elves, people within the SO that you know take these wish lists with their with their budgets and go find these uh, the, the kids' items on their wish list. And we usually package them up, and we have two days or in the afternoons where families come and pick them up. With we have green Santa and all that, but. Uh, due to COVID, we're, we're working around it. We are going to have a green Santa because we think it's still important for uh, families here in the county. We're, uh, we're working through how we're going to do it, but yes, absolutely. If somebody wants to support that, where would they find the information on that? There is some information on, on the, our website, the Sheriff's Office website. So if you go to www.co.comal.tx dot us you can go to the sheriff's office part of that page and there's information about green santa all of green santa is donations only so uh, that's how we take care of that so if you wanted to help in that form uh, for families that may need your help and they're uh, they're vetted you know to make sure that you know we're not duplicating because blue santa is a program that the city of new Braunfels has so we want to make sure that anyone that needs the help gets it so we don't do uh, duplication. All right, excellent. Anybody else uh, with a, a question before we close out here? All right, well, Sheriff, I really want to thank you for coming in this morning and taking the time. I know we're in the middle of election period, too. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't voted yet, but you're on the ballot. I, I can take you to go vote. Oh, uh, well. no, yes. Um, I did. I, I voted the uh, other day. I, I actually went Tuesday, the first day of voting, and I know that everybody's heard about the uh, very long lines and the biggest response to a very important election, but I kind of skipped the line on Tuesday because it went out elections, down the parking lot, down the following, and around the corner. Uh, but I stopped by Wednesday morning, and uh, I waited in the line, and I voted, went through the ballot. Our new uh, ballot machines that the county purchased are wonderful. It's all push button, uh, very quick to go through all 21 uh, votes. No more of the old, uh, remember when we used to have the dial that was kind of uh, tricky to use, but uh, I encourage everybody to go vote. Thank you if you're going all the way down the ballot to where somebody I know is on there. <laughs> but no, it, it's been, it was a, it, it's a great, uh, great, machines of the county purchase. 
Well, again, we thank you for your leadership and all you've done within the county, and, and we are just blessed to have you in the helm uh, as sheriff. And so I certainly feel safe every night, and I know everybody in the room does as well. So really want to thank you, and anything we can do to support you, we're, we are here for you. I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Coffee break with the chamber and uh, Sheriff Mark Reynolds. We appreciate you taking the time out of your morning and we look forward to seeing you in about two weeks. Have a wonderful day.